The ocean is a central image. It is the symbolism of a great journey. Inya. We arrived into Georgetown area of the Exumas in the early afternoon after an uneventful trip down the Exuma Sound. This is a good thing since the only way to Georgetown is to venture on the east side of the Exumas where you have more exposure and deeper water. Uneventful is a good thing. We passed the couple from Newburn we had met in Bimini leaving and we chatted a moment on the radio. They told us that the boat count was over 300 boats in and around Georgetown. Most boats actually anchor along Stocking Island across from Georgetown and Elizabeth Harbor. As we entered the area, we were speechless as the anchor boats just went on and on. These boats are here for the annual Georgetown Cruising Regatta, which is kind of like a mecca for cruisers in the Bahamas. Many people come straight to Georgetown each year and spend their entire season in this area. We found that for cruisers with children, this was also an even better place to get lots of kids together and give parents some time to play. According to the Chat and Chill website, a beach bar located on Stocking Island, where most of the Georgetown Cruising Regatta fun can be found, the regatta and area are described this way. Since 1980, cruising yachtsmen and their families from around the world have been gathering in Georgetown, Exuma, for a multi-day event called the Georgetown Cruising Regatta, which takes place every year in late February, early March. Initially beginning as a sequence of boat races, the event has evolved into a succession of fun parties, games, contests, and boat races. At the epicenter of the eclectic gathering is Kenneth Bowie, better known as KB, the bohemian-born proprietor of the Chat and Chill and owner of the nine acres of the Unreal Beach on which many of the regatta activities take place. He said, I figured out what the people wanted and what they needed. He separated the wants from the needs and started with the needs. From there, the business has gone straight up. Without KB, there be no Georgetown. The Georgetown Cruising Regatta includes 10 days of activities for visiting cruisers and Exumians on Stocking Island, Elizabeth Harbor, and Georgetown. You can enjoy two days of sailing as well as spectacular onshore activities such as conch shell blowing contest, a variety show, softball competition, and lots more family fun filled activities. This is according to the Caribbean First website. Topping off each weekend for many was an outdoor, non-denominational Sunday service on Volleyball Beach. Attending Beach Church, adults sat under the shade on wooden benches while kids were perched high in the trees. We never made it to Beach Church due to the weather on Sundays and the long dinghy ride based on where we had chosen to anchor, but our anchorage location would prove to be a good choice. As we arrived into the Red Shanks Anchorage, we spotted our friends on Barefoot, whom we had met in Rock Sound, and they gave us some advice about the area, the regatta, and Channel 68. Channel 68 is a well-organized cruiser's net where each morning local businesses make announcements, the latest weather information is provided, and cruisers can ask each other for help with just about any problem and make trades. We settled into the Red Shanks Anchorage just in time to watch the sun go down. We caught up with Chris and Aaron, our friends from Barefoot, the next day over at Chat and Chill Beach for the coconut toss and enjoyed laughing and meeting some new friends. We finally caught up with our friend Scott's brother Chris and his Canadian friends on the beautiful Power Cat fruition. We enjoyed sundowners and our new Canadian friend would now act as Club Commodore and plan our first Red Shanks Yacht and Tennis Club gathering on the beach because the tide is right. The Red Shanks Yacht and Tennis Club is best described in The Thornless Pass by Bruce Van Sant. For many years, the Red Shank Anchorage has had fame as the local of cruisers noted for their leisure style, whereas the Stocking Island Anchorage has its volleyball beach and the Monument Anchorage has its hamburger beach, at which yachts in the Anchorage carry on their community activities. Red Shanks has the Red Shanks Yacht and Tennis Club. 
The RSYTC stands on a half moon of beach fronting a cliff with many shell-like outcroppings where cruisers hold nightly happy hours with hors d'oeuvres. Many of the same yachts return every year to enjoy the unique isolation and civilization available here. And loose sort of, a loose sort of club does prevail. With no founding members present, one of the yachts acts as Club Commodore, welcoming yachts on the VHF radio. At the evening sundown gathering of the Red Shanks Yacht and Tennis Club, we met Val and Minnow aboard sailing vessel Ira from Wilmington, North Carolina, and they invited us to hike and explore Crab Key. First up on Crab Key is exploring the Walker Home Ruins. Back in the late 1700s, the Walker family needed to leave their home in eastern North America because they had supported the British, who were the losers in the American War of Independence. The family, along with their slaves, sailed to set up home on the land provided to them by the King of England, on the Exumas, a group of islands in the central Bahamas. The Walkers set up home on the island of Crab Key inside Elizabeth Harbor. Their properties were built using local stone. As was the custom, the kitchen was a separate building from the living quarters. This was the practice due to the risk of kitchens burning down due to the presence of open fires, plus the need to keep the heat of cooking away from the living area. They tried to develop their land by growing cotton, but after some years they gave up and moved on. The ruins of their home still exist to this day. Tripped over a couple of the stobs where they came to the <laughs> yeah. so they're doing a little, or somebody is. Slide. The house with the view. Right, it is the house with the view, you're right. I'm telling you. Oh, no back window to roll over. Yeah, it's good. I'll go see that. Does it like another entrance? Yeah, another yeah. little house. Oh. This is a good time to recommend the book Winds from the Carolinas by Robert Wilder. This fiction novel follows the Cameron family as they move to the Exumas from the Carolinas after the British lose the American Revolution. 
Many around Georgetown believe this novel is based on the Walker family and their ruins left on Crab Key. I enjoyed learning so much about the history of the Bahamas through this novel. The first sign we were getting near what is left of the resort and the start to develop Crab Key is the canal, a place we would snorkel in several times while in Georgetown, just to swim with the turtles who find this a place to eat and hide among the rock walls created when this canal was dredged. So we're here. So here? Then. Okay. So I don't know where. So they don't even have. Oh, no, we went not that far. So that dugout thing isn't even in here, I don't see. Oh, Unless this was supposed to be. Perhaps some part. I don't know, that's like a pool. I don't know, you're right. Isn't this crazy? the end of World War II, the story goes that a group of very wealthy individuals decided that they wanted to invest their funds in land. Not just any land, but in tropical islands. So they chose a trusted member of the group and he spent some years traveling the globe and buying tropical hotspots. After their targets were met, the purchaser was rewarded by the group by allowing him to choose two islands as a reward for his diligence. He chose Crab Key and Elizabeth Key both islands in Elizabeth Harbor in the Exumas. Fast forward 40 years, and the tourism industry is booming. Wealthy investors led by Michael Jordan descend on Exuma with a view to buy and develop Crab Key. Word reaches the press that the asking price is $10 million. The investors decide to walk away, but the government heard the rumors and informed the island's owner that according to their records, he had not paid the property tax, which had accumulated a figure reaching millions of dollars. The Crab Key owners were therefore forced to put the property on the market. Eventually, the island sold to the Murphy family, one of, if not, the largest pig farming enterprises in the United States. The Murphys put together a consortium with CN Luxury and drew up plans for Crab Key. By 2007, they intended to build a world-class development with a hotel, Italian-style hub with luxury restaurants, spa sports facilities, and high-end shops with high-end multi-million dollar homes spread along the shoreline. Then, of course, there would be a major marina capable of taking the world's mega yachts. The whole project was planned to be the preeminent island destination in the Caribbean. The plans were eventually passed and work began on the dredging for the marina. Work progressed for some time, then came to a halt and the project stopped. And all that remains is a beautiful bridge, built in the Italian style, which joins Crab Key to the mainland of Great Exuma, known locally as the Bridge to Nowhere.
seen our boat made down the little bit before we left. Sing me a song of a lass that is gone. Say, could that lass be I? Mary of soul, she sailed on a day.